Well guys, I'm doing something a little bit different today. I was invited to fly with the United States Air Force Thunderbirds to show you another amazing career option if you've ever dreamed of becoming a pilot. Now, I took the civilian path towards becoming an airline pilot and I love my job, but there are so many unique career opportunities out there. So that's what I'll focus on in this video, showing you what it means to become an Air Force pilot, some of the steps and tools that you can use to get there, and what it's like to fly in one of these amazing birds. I'll be flying today with Major Jason Markson, also known as FLAC, that's his call sign, in an F-16D model, which is a two-seat aircraft similar to this F-16 behind me. It's called the Fighting Falcon. Many pilots also call it the Viper. It has a maximum speed of Mach 2. It can fly up to 50,000 feet in the air, has a weight of about 29,000 pounds and a thrust of about 29,000 pounds. So it's a very capable aircraft. I'll be wearing a G-suit today to prevent blackouts and G-lock as we pull upwards of nine Gs in the aircraft. Thunderbird 8, Spring Tower, runway 17 left, wind 0707, clear for takeoff, change to departure. Thunderbird 8, clear for takeoff, 17 left, switch to departure, thanks. Swain, so uh, about pilot training. So when you get selected for a pilot slot, you'll go through your initial flight screen. That's done in Pueblo, Colorado, and you'll fly the DA-20. It's basically a lawnmower with wings on it, uh, but you learn kind of the, the basics of military flight training. Uh, then you'll move on to the T-6 when you go to one of our pilot training bases. Uh, and that you'll learn the basics of flying there from instruments to visual flying, to formation, aerobatics, it's sort of your first introduction to it. Uh, then you'll track select. Uh, at that point, kind of depending on how you did or what you want, you go to T-38s or T-1s, or you can go uh, start to fly um, helicopters. And if you go T-38s, I can speak to that because I was a T-38 instructor pilot, um, but that's the fighter bomber track. Uh, you'll, you'll basically up the, double the speed and double the Gs at that point. Um, and then T-1, you start developing more of a crew concept and learn how to fly some of the cargo and uh, tanker aircraft, start learning more specifically about that, and then uh, obviously helicopters. Uh, and then eventually, once you're done, and so overall it's about a year total of pilot training, uh, but close to the end of that year, you get your assignment at that point. And so that is when you will go, like if you're in the T-38, you'll go fly F-16s or F-22s or B-1s or something like that. And then for the T-1, you'll go fly C-17s or KC-135s, uh, one of the cargo type aircraft. The Thunderbirds were founded in 1953 and have been using the F-16 as their primary demonstration aircraft since 1983. They're known for flying extremely tight formations as close as 18 inches apart in front of millions of spectators annually. One of my earliest memories is being one of those wide-eyed kids at my first air show having the Thunderbirds fly over and I can without a doubt say it is one of the biggest reasons that I became a pilot. Well, all right, here we go, smoke on ready now, here come the G's. Pause and roll! And roll out. Roll up for the airline to get scared. And look over our yeah, shoulder, cool. and there's our corkscrew. Nice. The first 
step in becoming a pilot in the United States Air Force is to get your commission in the United States Air Force, and that's uh, how you become a lieutenant. There's three different paths towards going towards that. The first is you go, can go to the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Second, you can do the Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps, which happens at universities across the nation. And finally, if you already have your bachelor's degree, you can go to what's called Officer Training School, which is down in Alabama. Let's do an inverted, inverted roll then. All right. So ready now. Here comes some inverted flight. There we go. A negative one, and here comes the roll. Stop it. And roll it. So you. Here comes the G. Awesome. Ooh, that's cool. Nine, buddy. Yeah. Ooh. So for service commitments, when you graduate pilot training, you get a 10 year commitment. So as soon as they hand you your wings, you also get a 10 year service commitment. So um, when you're done with that, you can choose to continue. Uh, and if you choose to continue, typically as you get older and higher in rank, you'll um, fly less and less sometimes. Uh, you'll get some more of those leadership positions like commander, squadron commanders, group commanders, things like that. Some of those roles do have uh, flying attached to it um, and some of them don't. That was awesome. Well, shoot, that was fun. That was awesome. Cool, man. You want to fly? Sure. All right, dude. On the, uh, I'll, I'll make sure we stay in the airspace, so I might okay. just take the jet as, if we have to turn around. Okay. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, dude, you have the aircraft. All right, I have the aircraft. Yeah, you really don't even have to use run pressure, do you? Yeah, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't even use the rudder pedals if that's what it is. If you've ever considered becoming an Air Force pilot, I bet you have a ton of questions and I can't cover everything you need to know in this short video. So check out the video description below for some links and resources so you can get the answers to some of those questions. There are so many amazing career options out there if you want to become a pilot. So research the different lifestyles, the different kinds of opportunities that you have and choose a path that works for you. I can't wait to see how many of you guys will look at the military as an awesome opportunity towards becoming a professional pilot.